Each year, people go missing in forests and national parks all around North America. Some are found alive, some are found dead, and some are never found at all. Now, I'm following these missing 411 cases that ex-police officer David Politis has been following for decades. And yes, I know David Politis is a apparent disgraced police officer, and I am cross-checking information that he reports with other sources as well. So I'm not just getting everything from him, I'm getting other information as well and basically gathering all the information up that I find across multiple sources to compare with each other. And I really want people to be aware of what is actually happening out there in the world with these cases because it is a little bit of a phenomena it, it really is and some of these cases are just downright baffling and eerie now one thing that David Politis did pick up on as these particular cases seem to follow a particular checklist some of the patterns that the missing 411 seem to follow is memory loss they seem to be children or younger people they have missing items of clothing or the clothing are found packed neatly in a bag or beside the victim. Crazy elevation changes with bodies being found in places that is not humanly really possible to climb up to. There is either no scent trail or very minimum scent trail. And the most obvious one is that a lot of these occur in national parks. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you don't know what's going on here, I'm a horror artist and I like to draw what I talk about in the videos. Now, nothing is meant to be insensitive to the victims or the victims' families, but if you are a sensitive person, I probably recommend maybe going to another channel. So I have a love for true crimes, anything scary, anything to do with the paranormal, aliens, UFOs, conspiracies, and I love to draw. So I combined all of that into this channel to hopefully bring you a unique experience. Now, if you do like any of the art in these videos, I have a Redbubble store where you can go and purchase a print of my art. And I also have an Etsy store where I make felt toy patterns. They're usually characters from horror movies or I make my own horror characters up. So if you are a creative person and you like that kind of stuff, all the links are down in the description below. Now, with that being said, let's get on with the goddamn video and let's get on with the drawing. 39-year-old James McGrogan, also known as Jim, was a doctor and worked at Indiana's St. Joseph Regional Medical Center in Mishawaka as an emergency department doctor. He was a lover of snowboarding and lived for adventure, and he had a wife, Sharon, and two young children. In March of 2014, James and three of his friends decided to go on a trip, which apparently had been planned with his friends for the better part of a year to Vail, Colorado to hike in the White River National Forest. Vail is a small town at the bottom of Vail Mountain and is also set inside a very large ski resort. James and his friends were looking forward to the trip to get away from the pressures of being doctors as they were all physicians. On the 14th of March 2014 at roughly 8.30 a.m., James and his mates started their nearly 15 kilometer hike to reach Eisman Hut and then camp at Camp Hale. This particular camp was filled with huts to shelter hikers on their journey to help keep them out of the weather for a night or two and rest. These huts were apparently built in the 1940s for the 10th Mountain Division and a training area for the war. Snow fell pretty heavy on that day apparently, several feet deep in some parts of the terrain and the hike up to the huts was steep and very woody and not an easy place to reach, but James and his three mates were quite experienced hikers and very well equipped. James himself had a mobile phone, basic medical supplies, sleeping bag, GPS, warm clothes and plenty of food and water. Roughly around 10 a.m., the four of them stopped to take a break. James apparently didn't rest and decided to keep hiking with the three mates to catch up with him later on. After the three friends rested, they started again on their way up to the huts where they would meet James, but when the trio arrived at the huts that afternoon, James was not there. 5.30 p.m. rolled around and James was nowhere to be seen. They called his name, even searched the area. The trio were concerned, so they notified the Eagle Valley Sheriff's Department. At first, the authorities weren't overly concerned, as James was very well equipped, but a rescue team was deployed to comb a 46 kilometer square area with helicopters, snowmobiles, and by foot. 
James's mobile even registered a ping that day he went missing, but after that it went dead. But by the 18th of March, the search had to be suspended due to bad weather. After five days of searching for James, he just couldn't be found. It wouldn't be until the 3rd of April 2014, so nearly three weeks after James disappeared, that James's body would be found near Booth Falls, which was a fair way east of Eisman Hut, by a group of backcountry skiers. That area where James was found would be roughly seven kilometres from the trail as the crow flies, but if you were walking to Booth Falls, it was 20 kilometres from where he was supposed to be. James was found at the bottom of an iced up waterfall laying on an ice sheet and the weird thing was he wasn't wearing his coat, gloves or his boots but he was wearing his helmet. James was also carrying a snowboard that was later found but his boots were never found. His mobile phone was still in his backpack and it was found that there was reception in the area and the phone and GPS that James was carrying was in working order. Once James's body was collected and an autopsy was performed, Coroner Carabetis found that James had multiple injuries. He had a broken leg, head trauma, and trauma to the left side of his chest, possibly from the fall from the top of the frozen waterfall. Even though his death was ruled an accident, people couldn't help but theorize about what happened to James. Did James suffer from hypothermia, which caused him to strip off? But there is the question of why didn't he just use his phone to call for help or call his mates? Was something going on with James that nobody knew about? Sharon McGrogan, James's wife, says she didn't even know about the quote-unquote guy's trip until a week before he was going. But like I said at the beginning of the video, he had apparently been planning this trip for a year with his mates. Sharon even specifically told James not to stray from his friends. James's friend that was part of the trio that day, Andrew Culp, said that he was furious with James for not waiting, but when the trio arrived at Eisman Hut and didn't see James, the frustration was replaced with worry and they knew something was not right. Another weird fact about where James was found is that this was a previously searched area and multiple times as well, but this could have been due to the poor visibility with the heavy snowfall. Because James wasn't familiar with the area, Area, it would have been easy for him to get disorientated, misstep, and fall right down the frozen waterfall. James's dad apparently stated that one of James's friends that was with him on that day said to him that James was actually close to the group the whole time and didn't walk off ahead, and the trio had no idea how he just suddenly vanished as the trail was open and visibility was great. Some of the theories that were floating around are firstly, maybe his mates did this to him, maybe they did kill him, but why would they do this? What's their motive? But I do personally think that this maybe would have come out by now because I reckon one of the trio would have either slipped up or confessed to murdering their friend. Surely. Second theory is that it looks like James had been transported from one area to the place where he died, which like I mentioned before, was nearly 20 kilometers by foot winding up through the mountains and his body had been in a really weird mangled position, like he had been dropped from a great height, like way more, way more of a height than the ice waterfall that he fell from. So apparently, James's body looked like it had been dropped from the sky, that it actually looked like he had been splattered. People speculated that a UFO abducted him, did some experiments, and then dropped him in a way to discard evidence of his prodding marks, or he walked into an open portal, and the other end was at the top of the icefall. Yes, I know, but hey, I'm not ruling anything out in this world. There is apparently notorious accounts of people disappearing that wear bright colored clothing, which is allegedly what James was wearing. There is cases in Indonesia where hikers go into the jungles and are warned not to wear bright colored clothes or they will go missing because something in the forest are attracted to the bright colors such as yellow. A Bugis Makassar group member, which is a person who is a part of the Southern Celebes Indonesia, 
accidentally wore yellow socks into the forest near Sandu Batu, and the 10 other group members he was with only wore dark clothing. He was walking through the forest to witness illegal logging when he felt sharp pains like bites on his left calf and thigh. He turned around and saw nothing around him. When his friend looked at his marks, they were like huge scratch marks on his leg. That night, he was so violently ill that he thought he was going to die. He did, however, recover days later and put it down to the socks. Villagers were calling him lucky to be here as he could have gone missing. No one else suffered anything as they were all wearing dark clothes. If you want to read the full story, I will have a link in the description below. Could there be something lurking in the forest that target people in brightly colored clothes? I want to know if James's mates were wearing wearing bright clothes too and if so this might not be applicable here but we all like to think that a normal explanation is always more plausible than a paranormal one but even I can't rule it out third theory is that he just did a stupid thing he wandered off got disorientated got hypothermia started to strip off and only got to his boots coat and gloves and then died from falling off the ice wall he didn't have time to get his phone out to contact anyone because he either died before that was possible or he was not in his right mind from being hypothermic Taking all things weird off the table, the basic details of this event is still strange and some things don't add up. He had all the equipment at his hands but didn't use them and he covered a 20 kilometer distance on his own in the wrong direction which he should have known or he should have just pulled out his GPS to navigate. David Politis labeled this mysterious and I'd like to look beyond what he has said but there is definitely something weird going on here. An experienced hiker just wouldn't get lost and then go deeper into the wilderness. He should have called his friends or emergency services. This part definitely does not make sense. Now, what do you think about this story? And what do you think happened to James? Do you think that it was paranormal? Do you think he walked through a portal? Do you think that his friends did this to him? Do you think someone else did this to him? Or was he just being silly and thought that he could just wander off in another direction and meet up with his friends and suffer the consequences. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Now the illustration that I decided to do for the video today was sort of going off into the alien UFO route. So this is what my brain came up with when I read the story. So we have a UFO coming down and we have an alien coming out of the bottom of the UFO and they're basically dropping this being which is not fully human <laughs> um, they're basically dropping this being down to earth and this alien is cutting all the cables and the wires that this thing is connected to and it's spraying out blood because this machine that he's connected to was doing experiments on him and was taking some of his blood and they've also cut two of his fingers off as well and cut one of his uh, feet off as well and they've got a hose going up there as well but he this alien is now cutting all of this with just a pair of scissors you know very technologically advanced right there because I was just you know I just felt it and I just wanted to draw that that's what came to me I trust the process like I have said before and this guy knows that he's dropping all the way out of the sky from a high high very high height and he is screaming and yeah now I tried to <laughs> replicate like the clothes being blown upwards as he's dropping and probably not my finest moment when it comes to uh, what I have drawn in the past but uh, yeah I gave it a go um, it gets the point across in a way I hope but yeah other than that yeah I'm not a big fan of that but anyway that is it from me hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe, dislike it, I couldn't care less because any interaction you give me goes towards the algorithm to push me up higher for other people to find me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.